Yo, and welcome to the show all about promoting the sport of lawn bowls. I'm Zach Woning, and this is Casual Bowls. Yo, welcome to episode two of Casual Bowls. On this week's episode, we went down to Vermont South Bowling Club and had a chat with their head coach, CJ Snary. Uh, we also went on Zoom and had a chat with Lee Schreiner uh, about his Schrunger Schnitzel Crumb. And we spoke to him a little bit in depth about his upbringing in bowls, what kept him around, and what clubs should be doing to not only attract new bowlers, but to hold on to them once they get them. Unfortunately, we had a couple issues with some of the recordings from Vermont South. So we'll be bringing that episode to you shortly. But fortunately, we got enough stuff with Lee that uh, we've got pretty much a full episode for you here. So let's enjoy Lee. Leroy, how you going, bud? Yeah, I'm all right, Wiz. How about you? Yeah, not too bad. Just enjoying a late night sneaky one. Oh, yes. We like a late night sneaky gin. Oh, lovely. Don't know about the gin, but I'll go to the beers. That's fine. Uh, I'm enjoying that sign back there, bud. Yeah, it's a market sign for the schnitzel crumb. So, yeah, a um, lot of money gone into the advertising and marketing of it. I am uh, expecting my sample pack soon, though. When you, you sent them off Wednesday, I sent them off last Tuesday. Some have got them already. Oh, yeah, yeah. Australia Post is a bit, bit slow through COVID. So, yeah, same. Um, I'd imagine you haven't got our shirt. I did send you up a shirt, but that uh, probably won't come until mid, mid next week. I'd imagine so. No, no, well, nothing's nothing's arrived yet. So for everyone out there, get around him. Uh, like he's gotten around us. Really, really appreciate the support you've had for the show, man. It's it's been good. So um, vice versa, it's a bit of a bit of a dog eat dog world. How hey? we're gonna look after each other? It is. Oh, that's right. We've got to get around everyone in the bowls world, I reckon. So, but um, who better than the absolute legend? I've said to you a few times before in person, and I know you don't like. Maybe you do deep down, but you say to me you don't like hearing it. But I always say you're my favourite bowler. You always have been. So I'm no, very, uh, very classy about the way you go about it. And I've always enjoyed watching it. So Yeah, well, I wasn't always classy and, and a good boy, you know, way back in the day. But as you get older, you mellow out. And yeah. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm like everybody. I hate to lose. Uh, so I had to put a few things in place. So that I wouldn't lose as often. Um, yeah. And that included looking after my temper, health, um, mental well-being, things like that. And the focus into that area is now obviously transformed onto the green. You don't win every time you play, but no. the losses are sort of not so not so many anymore. Yeah, and easier to take, I'd imagine, too. I always say to people, I say, geez, I'd if there's one person I'd hate to play in bowls, it'd be myself, because I know I'm just not gonna give up. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, I drive myself nuts. Yeah, so we actually put it out to get a few questions in, and that was one of the questions, is sort of what's going through your mind? Because you do look, like you said, maybe back in the day, not so much, but these days you look so composed when you're on the mat, and it's it's really yeah. hard to get a read of you. Win, winning or losing, it doesn't matter what the scoreline is, you look the same every time, and you look so composed. So the question I got was, what is going through Lee's head while he's playing a shot? Or what, during a game? Yeah, well... <laughs> Not not after three plugs or anything, but I wrote this baby not too long ago, <laughs> and it's all in there. Yeah. Um, everything I've learned over the last twenty years put in there from a mental point of view. Look, I I appreciate when someone plays a good shot, and it might be the shot that costs you the game. You know, you you just got to be realistic and put yourself in their shoes and go, well, geez, if I played that shot, I'd be stoked. So yeah, I think I think the the point of the point is is that. Yeah, and I still get frustrated sometimes. But the point is, is that you do the best you can do. And what your opposition does is a, a lot of the time out of your control. So yeah. um, I think I think the point is, is focus on your own game um, and what you're doing. And yes, you do have to apply some tactics when you play certain players. There's no doubt about that. But I think, I think just play every ball as though it's going to be the one that's going to win the game pretty much. Yeah, and you have to play with that intensity 
through big tournaments every single end every single bowl you play because one slip up and that could be your, you know that's it's all done yeah no they're great words of advice because you do see a lot of people so sort of, even they might be in a really comfortable position but one shot goes against them the wrong way and they just lose it and that's the end of them so even if they do yeah. through that one game they're cooked for the next game so like you said yeah and you know that that, you know, that can happen that can happen on the last end of a game when you lose and all that sort of stuff, but you've got to be realistic and look back at all the opportunities missed on every other end and yeah. take a step back and go, all right, I wasn't good enough. Yeah, no, absolutely. So one of the other questions I did get was, uh, so let's go back to back in the day when you weren't such a good boy. This might even be before that, back when you were a real junior. <laughs> I don't know what you were like as a, as a 12-year-old there, but... Um, just a quick little, I mean, most people who know bowls know about you. So just a quick little, where'd you start? But more importantly, what kept you in the game once you did get started? Because that's that's the thing a lot of clubs have trouble with. They can get the new members in, but then how do we hold them? They sort of hang around for a year or two and then they're out. They're off doing something else. So so what kept you in the game? And, you know, tell us a little bit about your start to bowls. Yeah, so 1994, I started 27 years ago at Mount Cottrell Bowls Club just outside of Melton. Um, I went to high school, current Jang in Melton. So uh, mum took me to a try bowls day. They used to be called RVBA open days or something yeah, okay. back then. And um, yeah, I, I'd been watching it since I was a kid. So I was, I was one of those that was always going to be hooked, but um, you know, I, I continued on in the game, but of course Mount Cottrell lost me as a member. I took it, went to another club and went as far as I could there, then went to another club and so forth. And, and you know, I ended up going through a lot of clubs to keep myself interested, um, you know, through coaching and, and bowling. And um, and now I've found a nice little home up here at Raymond Terrace um, in Newcastle. But look, it's a tough one. What kept me going is probably my love for the game. I appreciate the history of the game. I appreciate the skill of the game, that every single time I go out to play, that it could be windy, not windy, wet dry, hot, cold, yeah. true green, bad green. You know, every time you go out, it's different. So um, I think it's the, it's probably a bit of a David Bryant thing that I sort of learned off him over the years. Every rink's a challenge. Every condition's a challenge. It's not always about sticking the ball on top of the jack. It's about getting closer than your opposition and all this sort of stuff. And Yeah. Um, but, and a lot of us are competitive and, and I like to win. So um, you know, I, I got addicted to the game pretty early on because of, because of, it's a game you, it takes five minutes to learn and, and a lifetime and another lifetime to master because it's just every single time you go out when you, you have a good day, a bad day, it's just different every time. Yeah. No, well said. The, um, let me try and simplify that for people watching at home going, well, you know, how do we keep people in? Like you're a rare breed where you already were in love with the game before getting into it. So if yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, what's coming into it? Are you, would you suggest maybe teach him about the game rather than just teach him how to put a bowl down and let, let him run? Actually, teach him about the game and talk to him about those little idiosyncrasies that sort of only bowls has. Uh, and sort of yeah, a little bit more on the history and actually some of the theory of it, I guess, which can be boring for some kids, but you know, less about the practical, because that's what you can, but it's not, you know, it's not always just kids that we should be looking at. Um, no, too. Right. Know, I mean, I know, I know, the, I know the focus is on the younger ones, but, um, you know, a lot of club, clubs struggle with younger members because they eventually move on to somewhere better, somewhere that offers them something, you know, that takes the financial pressure off their parents and all that sort of stuff. But um, I think from my point of view, uh, rather than just telling people how to roll a bowl down the like bowl a bowl down the green and you know stand here and aim there and that sort of stuff, I think there needs to be some something a little bit more in depth about teaching people. I couldn't write a book on it, but teaching people how to love the game, like to want to come back. Yeah. Um, and you know, I don't know the magic secret to what it is, but. You know, we're human beings. If we fall in love with things or we get addicted to things, we constantly go back. So how are we going to addict people to bowls and how are we going to make people fall in love with bowls? Yeah. Um, 
not by getting not by getting 85 year old George to tell somebody how to roll a bowl down on a mat. You know, he's doing a great job helping his club out, but that's not going to make people addicted. No, and you're love right. the game and want to come back. Yeah, no, no, no. well said. Well, mate, I, we only had we had a few questions, but I filtered them out, and most of them boiled down to the same thing. With you being that, let's call you an elder statesman, even though you're at the ripe old age of 39, you're still a yeah, it's same, same as elders, too. Hey, I'm only 33, and I've been around 20 years myself. So it's like, you know, I'm a I'm a uh, veteran of the sport, as are you. Um, but all the questions boil down to the same thing: how do we keep how do we get kids involved and how do we keep people involved once they start joining? So, uh, I mean, I think you've cleared that up beautifully. So I think, I think people will love what, uh, love what they've just heard and hopefully learn something and, and take it and apply it to their own clubs. So, you know, yeah, just tough. try and try and help people love the game. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, well, tell them why the game's so, tell them why the game's so great. Why all the different conditions, you know, everything that might make them want to come back. Yeah, the beer is cheap and this and that. And there are other things that can help addict people to the game. But certainly, are. yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's human nature to be attracted to things we're addicted to and things we love. So if, yeah. if that's the case, then then how can we addict people to the bowling green? No, that's right. And yeah. make them make them love bowls. Yeah. Sure, I reckon we could talk for ages about this, but I know you're a busy man. And uh, we don't want to keep you too long, so I won't. I won't uh, throw you any more questions. I don't think, but I think we might. We might have to look at getting you on for a longer episode, and we'll we'll dig a little bit deeper into this stuff because I think people really enjoy what they're hearing here. So, no problems. I'll just keep waving the schnitzel crumb past the <laughs> camera for plugs. So uh, we talked a bit about your product last week, but um, anything from the man who's actually created it? Yeah, well, the feedback's been really good. So, um, I, I suppose. It's something that I've been cooking for about six years now. Yep. And uh, I've done it at a couple of, I run a couple of bistros at bowls clubs over the years, you know, the one night a week thing. And it's, it's been a big hit. So yeah, um, I thought, well, why not have a go at it? You know, why not? Something you're good at and something you love too. I did go to one of the Bendigo East Leroy Bistro nights and uh, had some of the chicken. It's bloody delicious. So you did have a shrunken schnitzel. I did. I'm looking forward to making my own when it comes. I've read the recipe out. We might even post that up where we can here, but um, you put the recipe out on your website, I believe I saw it. So Yeah, I'll, yeah. The, the I'll directions are all on the website. So, um, yeah. And there's a gravy recipe on there too for the what oh, I call okay. the ultimate taste sensation. <laughs> you putting out your own gravy powder or what? We're just sticking with the crumb for now? Just the crumb for now. It's it's an expensive business. The food the food business. You can imagine the legals behind the packaging and yeah. and the registrations and the insurance and everything. So we're just going to start with the one product and um, yeah, I'm just employed a Vic state manager and and now looking to uh, appoint a Queensland state manager. So oh, beautiful. Yeah. We, um, we need to expand in 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 the um, you know if we happen to get locked down in new south wales i'm i'm up in newcastle so yeah we're not locked down at the moment but if we do get locked down i need to have people still on the road yeah trying yeah. to get the product in people's hands absolutely well i've already had a couple uh responses from the ads we've been putting up and there's a few people looking to buy it but uh i did mention that to you during the week and you said something about uh, it's mainly the restaurants and uh yeah so yeah yeah so my my food license that that i've got to to sell this product is not direct to the consumer so it's to uh other businesses so basically i sell the the 250 gram bags they come in packs of 20 so you know you yep. can buy a box of 20 of them um and also sell the 10 kilo sacks okay. which make about um they make about 400 schnitty so they're good for uh restaurants bistros yeah, yeah clubs butchers is is one of our big target areas so right yeah um nice. yeah and, and you can buy them solo yeah well the, the idea is is try and get some clubs and pubs and and some you know specialty shops on board that can can buy a box of 20 and then and then sell it at the yeah. recommended retail price of of nine bucks which is not too bad for 10 you know when you can make 10 schnitzels out of a small packet yeah, that's right. And um, you know, yeah, you pay twenty bucks for a schnitzel. 
you pay 20 for a schnitzel at the pub and it tastes like cardboard. So nine bucks ain't going to hurt to no, sure. make 10 yeah. decent ones. Yeah, no, I'd happily pay that. We're both starting something new and um, and a lot of our early, well, especially for me, my target market early is going to be involved with the people I know, bowling clubs and yeah, that sort of stuff. So it seemed a fantastic idea to join up with you who is going to be obviously videoing to an audience that are bowlers. So. Yeah, that's right. And I think clubs will get around this too. Uh, clubs will get yeah. some, some of your shrunger schnitzel crumb. The shrunger schnitzel crumb. Yeah, just so you know, like the, the next batch of free samples is coming out. I'm doing 500 free samples, yeah, okay. which is costing me an arm, a leg, and probably my other arm, but to get yeah. them all posted out and all that sort of stuff. But <laughs> if people want a free sample, a free 250 gram sample, all they got to do is jump on my website www.shrungerschnitzel.com.au register for a free sample and if you're one of the first 500 i think i've sent out about 150 so far so still 350 more free sample bags to go out there yeah. um uh, you i'll send you a free bag no charge no postage give it a whirl if you like it get it in your local bowls club get it in your local pub i help you you help me it's the way the world works that's it well, good on you, mate. I hope everyone gets around you. And um, once again, thank you very much. I won't take up any more of your time. I know you're a busy man. Uh, you've got plenty plenty on the go. So uh, you look after yourself and good luck with it all. And we'll keep getting around you and hopefully we can get you on the show at a later date. Sounds good, buddy. Catch you later. Cheers, mate. Have a good one. All right, many thanks to Lee Schroner again. Uh, love you, brother. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for supporting the show. Uh, if you want to be likely and get your product on the show, this actually came the day after, as said in the video. Uh, if you want to get your product on the show, hit us up on the socials. Ideally, hit us up through the email, which should come up somewhere. I'm not sure where it'll come up, but the email will pop up here. So, uh, And look, stay tuned for the next episode. As I said, the Verma South stuff should be coming out. We just had an issue with one of the clips we may need to re-record. I'm not sure what we're going to do there, but it doesn't come out next week. It'll come out the week after. In the meantime, we're going up to Lillardale this weekend to go speak with my mate Joshy Sanders, coach up there. So either way, you'll get a Lillardale episode or you get a Vermont episode. But this, I'm hoping there's more within the episodes for everyone to sort of get around. It's not just based purely on the club. Uh, Merch-wise, we've got obviously some branding going on with some of the clothes, stubby holders and the hats uh, in the works with some tournament shirts potentially. Stay tuned over the next few weeks for uh, some more information about that. Otherwise, as usual, my beer is done. So is the show. Thanks, guys.